So this is what started my addiction to diesel caravans almost 25 years ago. I had a dream of having a fuel efficient one with a manual transmission. And this is the 1.6 VW diesel with a turbo 74 horsepower. It wasn't much options back then in January of 2001. What to put in here for a diesel? Yes, the ALH motor had just came out in 2000 and it was 2001, but I checked the auto records and they wanted $2,500 to $3,000 for the motor, just the motor, with a core. You had to give them back your old motor. If you didn't, they wanted $500 more and then there was tax. Then you would have to buy the transmission separately, buy the axle separately, and buy a wi wiring harness separately. So it wasn't a bud budget option for something that was never done before and I wanted to see if it would fit. Well, it does fit, no problem, lots of space. You could throw someone in there and, st and, and hustle them across their border without anybody noticing. But there was some complications. The first thing is these early diesels and other Volkswagens back then with the front wheel drive transmission have a really complicated linkage system and a solid rod or shaft that goes to the gear shifter and linkages there too and these linkages just keep wearing out or popping off and people keep ruining reverse gear because you couldn't get it all the way in reverse and the reverse gear would grind so as you can see some cables there I couldn't even use the option of using the shaft that went with the original Volkswagen shifter it just wouldn't work out so my very first shifter mechanism was from a Dodge and it wore out so my second one was from a Volkswagen from the 2000s which is this one but it made all the gears in reverse if I hooked up the linkages the way they were supposed to so this linkage had to be welded to the top there and that put all the gears in the correct order the clutch worked out fine I just used the uh, a Dodge clutch and the Dodge clutch cable and just a little spacer there where the cable attaches the transmission to give it the right amount of slack. These are really dependable motors, they're just underpowered. I bet this vehicle only goes about 80 miles per hour. The most, one of the most complicated parts was making a motor mount where the timing cover is where there was never supposed to be a motor mount and be able to still change the timing belt. So this is a Chrysler motor mount here. Bunch of stuff I jury rigged there to make it attach to the engine. And well, it works, it's fine. And then at the back, I made a special bracket so I could mount the Dodge power steering pump that came with the van. Front motor mount was really easy. That motor mount was easy to make. But I wouldn't recommend this engine for anything you're converting. It's just too outdated, too underpowered. Yes, and so the next stage was my ALH, which you're gonna see next in my later model caravan. Continuing on the three diesel van comparison, the diesel caravans, Tony, is this one's the ALH. Well, the ALH, the good thing about it and any later diesels that Volkswagen made that are four-cylinder is they have the typical front-wheel drive motor mount layout like a motor mount there and a motor mount there and the dog bone underneath like almost every front-wheel drive car has. So it's much easier to fit an ALH or a later four-cylinder diesel into a modern front-wheel drive vehicle than the 1.6 it's much harder, you can see the ECU there, to do the wiring. It took me like nine hours to deconstruct the wiring harness and get out all the wires that I didn't need, Tony, and make it a standalone harness that would work in any vehicle, wired up to the ignition switch that's part of the van on the original steering column. The engine originally produced 90 horsepower, but with an ECU tune, just a basic one, I got 20 more horsepower without doing anything else. So it had 110, 
which I would say is adequate. I never did find the total top speed of this fan, but it's definitely much better than a 1.6, that's for sure. The 1.6 is underpowered. This is direct injection. TDI stands for turbo direct injection. And that's a much better design than that, that really weird uh, style of injection that the older diesels have where it's not direct. It goes into this little port first and that's where the glow plug is before it gets into the combustion area. And that makes it much harder to start when it's cold and often needing the, the uh, what do you call that thing, the block heater. This vehicle starts up to zero Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit perfectly well without any glow plug whatsoever. And my 1.6 pretty much needs glow plugs all the time unless it's close to 30 degrees Celsius or close to 90 Fahrenheit. So this one's a little quieter than the 1.6. Much torquier, smoother. It's uh, not bad. And people can easily do these up with bigger turbos and bigger injectors and a different tune to get much more horsepower. Now for fuel economy, all three of my diesels, my CJAA and my latest fan, the 1.6, and the 1.9 as you see here, they all got five kilometers five liters per hundred kilometers on the highway. This one has a five speed. The 1.6 has a five speed and my gray one has a six speed. The, uh, what's that work out to? 47 miles per gallon for a US gallon or 55 miles per gallon for a Canadian gallon, which is 20% bigger. So still, these are a dime a dozen now. Yeah, if you want to do a conversion and use them on front wheel drive or wheel drive, they're a decent option, but no comparison to that. So this is the option anyone should consider if they're doing a four cylinder VW diesel engine swap. My third swap in a caravan. This one I did uh, exactly four years ago this month. It looks factory, it sounds factory, and when you're driving the vehicle with the door closed and the windows rolled down, you still can't even hear the motor. It's, it's just like driving a factory vehicle. You can't tell. If you close your eyes, you think Chrysler made this. Anyways, this is the CJAA variant 2 liter uh, TDI. It has a com high pressure common rail electronic injection and it's exactly exactly the same amount of work in engineering as installing an ALH so why use an ALH they're very they're, they don't even compare to this engine this engine has a mild ECU tune on it and it has 350 pounds of torque at the engine and at, and it can get that as low as 2000 rpm right in your very drivable range it runs at 1600 RPM on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour, which is around 60 miles per hour. It has a VW six-speed manual transmission. Now these vans have a transmission problem with their 3.6 and their six-speed automatic, and they commonly go bad, but now I know I'm never gonna have that problem. This engine starts so amazing in the winter time, it doesn't matter how cold it is. It just fires up within like less than two seconds every time. Fuel economy for all three vehicles. The 2002 Caravan, the blue one from 1995, and this 2011 is the same. Huge difference in power and torque, but they each get five liters per hundred kilometers on the highway. Uh, they all run around the same RPMs on the highway and they get, uh, let's see, it works out to this van with a 75 liter tank, around 1400 kilometers for one tank. What other passenger vehicle can do that? So that works out to 47 miles per gallon for the highway if you have American gallons or 55 miles per gallon on the highway for Canadian gallons, which is called the Imperial Gallon. 
and no no problems four years all i do is change the oil fix the brakes i've done the struts and some wheel bearings haven't touched anything under here this is this is what anybody should consider now expense wise i found a slightly crashed but still driving condition but but the airbags were blown oh no i guess they weren't they weren't even blown it was hit on the corner there a 2011 jetta I paid 1500 Canadian dollars, which is like 35 worth 35% less than American dollars. I sold the body and the parts I didn't use for $900. So it ended up costing me for the wiring, the axles, the transmission, the motor, everything I needed, only 600 Canadian dollars, which is like what, 425 American dollars? What a cheap swap. It only had 149,000 kilometers, which is like 92,000 miles. So it does run and drive like that. So it's gonna probably last me the rest of my lifetime since I'm 64 and I drive only about 14,000 kilometers a year. So it was cheap. I mean, I'd seen lots of other ones, same condition after being crashed and on Facebook marketplace, and you can get them for around the same price. So like what better option it's, it's the same work low expense it's probably the same price as you're going to pay for an ALH drivetrain it also took nine hours to de deconstruct the wiring harness but that's the same amount of time as it took for the ALH so this is the cat's ass this is the option you should take if you're doing any front wheel drive or rear wheel drive conversion with a Volkswagen diesel. Go the common rail. Yes, they're more complicated. So far, zero problems with me. Some people don't like them. Now that I have one, I'm crazy about them. So we'll do a startup. Don't know what that hole is for. Neutral. What's that thing for? Let's go check the exhaust out. I use the original Chrysler exhaust system or Dodge. Pretty much no sound. Doesn't sound much different than the V6. Body vib vibration is barely detectable. I used all the Volkswagen motor mounts, every one of them. Let's close the hood. Yep, sounds pretty good. And gobs of power. This fan is fast. Please consider this option <laughs> on your next diesel swap.